So we're told that a company sells seeds and they claim that 55% of its PCs germinate. So in the first part of this question, we're asked to write down a reason why the company should not justify their claim by testing all the pea seeds they produce. So having a think about it, we know that if they test all their peas, then they'll have none to sell. And we know that this isn't really best practice for a business because they make money from selling products. So writing this down, we'll say that if they test all their peas, then they will have none to sell. This is not an effective business method as they can't get any income if they have destroyed all their peas. So this question was worth one mark and we receive our one mark for stating that the seeds would be destroyed during the process of checking them so therefore they have none to sell. So in part B of this question we're told that a random selection of the pea seeds is planted in 10 trays with 24 seeds in each tray. So we have 10 trays, each with 24 seeds in them. We're asked, assuming that the company's claim is correct, we remember they claim that 55% of its pea seeds germinate, we're asked to calculate the probability that in at least half of the trays, 15 or more of the seeds germinate. So to begin, why don't we say that S is the random variable which is the number of seeds out of 24 that germinate. We're going to have a binomial distribution. We know this because we have a repeated number of trials. So we have 24 seeds, so that's doing something 24 times. So we can therefore say that S is going to be binomial distributed, and we know that N is going to equal 24, and the probability P is going to equal 0 0.55 and this is because the company claims that 55% of its pea seeds germinate so therefore our binomial distribution will be 24 and the probability is 0 0.55 so then we also so we've now covered the 24 seeds in each tray but we also have 10 trays so we're going to let t be the random variable which is the number of trays with at least 15 or more seeds germinating. So we'll therefore have that T is binomial distributed and N is going to be equal to 10 this time because we have 10 trays, but we don't yet know the probability because we need to use our random variable S to work this out. So let the probability be Q and we'll work Q out in a minute. So we'll now work out the probability Q. So Q is going to be equal to the probability. So we're asked in at least half of the trays, 15 or more of the seeds germinate. So 15 is our key number here. So we have the probability that the number of seeds germinating is going to be greater than or equal to 15. And remembering that we have N equal 24 and P equal 0.55 this is going to equal and we can either do this in our calculator or refer to a binomial distribution table this is going to be equal to 0 0.299 and then what we need to do we'll then have that t is going to be binomial distributed it still has 10 trials and we now know what q is so we can put that in so it's going to be 2.99 and then we're asked if at least half of the trays, so that means we have at least five, so we want to work out the probability that the number of trays is greater than or equal to five, and again with n equals 10 and probability is 0 0.299, we put this into our binomial calculator or look at a binomial distribution table, and this comes out to three significant figures at 0 0.1. Four, nine, and this is our final answer. So therefore the probability that in at least half of the trays 50 or more seeds germinate is 0 0.149. This question was worth three marks and we receive our first mark for knowing to set up both of our variables. 
So when we've set up a random variables and particularly the key piece here is knowing that Q is the probability which we need to work out using the random variable S. So we received a second mark for working out what this probability Q was equal to and we get that mark here. And then we receive a third and final mark for correctly working out the answer which was 0 0.149. So in part C of the question, we're asked to write down two conditions under which the normal distribution may be used as an approximation to the binomial distribution. So from our knowledge of binomial distributions and normal distributions, there is two main points that we can make here. So the first one is that N is large, and the second one is that P, so that's the probability, must be close to one half. So therefore, that is two key points which we must say to get our mark. So we get our one mark there for making these two points. Summing this up, there are two conditions that must be met where we can use a normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution, and that is when n is large or when our probability is close to one half. So for part D of this question, we're given some further information. We're told that a random sample of 240 pea seeds was planted and 150 of these seeds germinated. We're to assume that the company's claim is correct, so that claim was that 55% of the pea seeds germinate, and we're to use a normal approximation to find the probability that at least 150 pea seeds germinate. So we're going to have the random variable x, and it is going to be the number of seeds which germinate. So it is going to be a normal distribution, and it is going to have mean mu and variance of sigma squared. So we know that when we use when we use this approximation we have that mu is going to equal n multiplied by p and our sigma squared so our variance is going to equal n multiplied by p multiplied by q. So we have that in this case n is going to be 240, so n is equal to 240. p is equal to, well that refers to the claim that they made, which was 55%, so p is 55%, and q is going to be 1 minus 0 0.55, which is 0 0.45. So therefore, we can work out that mu is going to be equal to 240 times by 0 0.55, which is equal to 132 and we'll have that sigma squared is going to be equal to NPQ which is going to be 240 times 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 which is going to be equal to 59.4. So therefore we've worked out the mean and the variance, so we can rewrite our distribution, so we'll have the x is normally distributed with mean of 132 and variance of 59.4. So before we then go on to work out this probability, we note that we must use the continuity correction. So when we work out our probability, we subtract 0 0.5. And this is something that we know that we're to do when we are using a normal approximation and this is just part of the process. So we're going to take a little further look at why we have to use this continuity correction. We know that when we have discrete data, we can approximate this to a continuous distribution. But to make this approximation, we have to take into account the continuity correction. And relating this back to our question, we know that the binomial distribution is discrete and we then use our continuity correction to approximate it to a normal distribution, which we know is continuous distribution. So we have for our binomial distribution that x is greater than or equal to 150. We then apply our continuity correction, so we subtract 1 half, and this gives us that x is greater than or equal to 149.5. So we therefore have that the probability of x being greater or equal to, we were asked originally to work out with 150, but we're to subtract a half, so we'll have 149.5. Then using our z score, this is going to be the probability that z is going to be greater or equal than 149.5.
then we take away the mean mu which is 132 and then we divide by the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance so that will be the square root of 59.4 and then we put this into our calculator so this comes out as z greater than or equal to 2.27 and then we can use our calculator or check a normal distribution table and we have that the answer to this is 0 0.0116 to three significant figures. And therefore we have completed the question and we've worked out that the probability that at least 150 pieces germinate is going to be 0 0.0116. This question was worth three marks and we receive our first mark for getting our distribution into this form here. So by working out the mean and the variance. We then receive our second mark for knowing to use z-scores when we get to this stage here, where it's in a form where we can almost use a calculator to find it out. And then we receive our third and final mark for having the correct answer, which was 0 0.0116. So in part E of the question, we're asked to use our answer to part D to comment on whether or not the proportion of the company's PCs that germinate is different from the company's claim of 55%. So our probability from part D was 0 0.0116, and this is a very small number. So this small number tells us that there is evidence to suggest that the company's claim is incorrect. Therefore, we've completed this question and receive our one mark for having this correct statement here, which explains that we have a small probability, which means that the company's claim is incorrect.